Before I will talk about the main topic of this video, I want to thank you for all the nice comments of the last one. My last video was the first video I created in English and I got very nice feedback from you. So I want to ask you if I should switch my content to English or if I should keep it in German. So please support me to find the correct decision by joining this survey about this question. Thanks for that and now we will start with the GTEC A10. Have fun! Hello and welcome back to another video today with the second part of the review of the GTEC A10. In my last video I showed you all the issues I had before I was able to print any part on this printer. If you didn't watch it, please watch this before by clicking this info card button or follow the link in the video description. The printer is made from aluminum extrusions and very rigid. The build size is 220 in X, 220 in Y and 260 in Z direction. The guidings are using V slots in the aluminum extrusions and these POM wheels are running in these V slots. So a lot of printers are using this kind of guiding. There are pros and cons of this guiding. We will follow in another video. So it's up to you if you like it or if you don't like it. The Z movement is designed by using only one Z spindle. So in the beginning I was afraid if this will work well because it's the same design like on my CR10 as it arrived. And on my CR10 I needed to upgrade it because I had a lot of issues with only one Z spindle. Okay, the CR10 has a much bigger X axis, so I think for this one it's okay and it's working till this moment very good. There's one thing to say about this aluminium extrusion. If you watched my last video, you saw I needed to turn it 180 degree because in the one wheel slot I had bumps and as I moved the heated bed forward and backward it was locking in several positions. So it's easy to do to turn this extrusion but there's only thing you cannot use the old mounting plate of the Y end stop. So I designed a new one you can use your old screws and Two additional T-nuts will be necessary to mount it again. So you can find the parts down below in the video description to download it. The filament transport is using a Bowden system. So this Bowden system is, in my opinion, the new standard in the 3D printing world. Almost every new printer is using a Bowden system. So the PTFE tube is on the correct length, so you don't need to cut it because a lot of printers are using two long PTFE tubes which creates a lot of friction. Here it's okay. The build plate of the GTEC is great. Here GTEC uses the GTEC super plate and the super plate is similar to any Cubix Ultra Base and it's working awesome. If you heat up the bed to 50 or 55 degrees for PLA, the part is sticking extremely good to the surface. After cooling down, you can pick the part without any force and pull it away. There's only one thing I miss and that's an insulation of the bottom side of the heated bed. But if you consider the price of this printer, it's okay. Let's talk about the electronics. The PSU contacts are covered, so no touching to the contacts are possible. It's good. The system is using 24 volts, which is great because you are much faster to heat up the bed and the nozzle. Unfortunately, GTEC installed 24 volt fans for the mainboard cooling the hot end cooling and the part cooling, which sounds sensible because it's a 24 volt system, but I don't know why. The fans are only supplied by 12 volts, so they are working with only the half of their capacity. 
There's a solution to supply the fans with 24 volts by using a jumper and setting it to the main board. I don't know if GTEC missed it to install the jumper or if there's any other reason. Thanks to Jenjen F who commented my last video and linked his video where he is showing how to get it run. I did it and it worked. Unfortunately, the condition of the part cooling fan didn't change. So there's the same condition as before. I need to set 100% that it is, it is turning. I had a lot of issues with this printer in the beginning as you could see in my last video. And this is the only one I couldn't fix till now. So unfortunately it's not running correctly. I need to investigate in the future again. The display is no graphics display. It's only a text display, but more is not really necessary to achieve good prints. The connection from the mainboard to the display for this GTEC is using a ZIF cable. And this kind of connection is not my favorite one because the ZIF cable is not easily to buy. And if you want to change the display to another one, the most displays are not using this kind of connection. So you are limited for buying a display. So let's focus to the heart of this printer and that's the main board. GTEC is using the GT2560 Revision B main board which is open source. I am not an electronics specialist but on this main board are installed two SMD fuses which protect the electronic components. The plugs are very good and the complete cable management is done in an awesome way in my opinion. But this great cable management has one disadvantage and that's the point of modding. If you want to modify anything, if you want to change for example this part cooling fan with another, you are not able to only to unplug one cable and plug and the new fan on the main board because you have this cable management with only one plug with several cables so you need to unplug the plug unwire the cables, crimp the new wires from the new fan and set it back to the plug. So for advanced users it shouldn't be any issue, but for beginners it's not as friendly to modify as other, as other printers are. The stepper drivers are plugged to the main board, so it's great you can easily change to TMCs or stepper drivers of your choice. There are two sockets empty, so you can upgrade your printer, for example, with a second extruder drive. A pity, in my opinion, is that GTEC didn't solder the plug to the mainboard for these three sockets. So if you want to upgrade it, you need to solder the plug by yourself to the socket. Again, for Advanced users, perhaps it's no issue. For beginners, they won't do it, I think so. That's a point perhaps GTEC will change in the future because the modding ability, let's say in this way, is much better if I only need to plug the next drive on the board. One more issue, in my opinion, is, as I mentioned, the GT2560 Revision B is an open source board, it's cool, but I don't find any information about this board. So I need a schematic of this board that I know which plug is for which function, which pin delivers which voltage and so on. And I don't found this information in the internet. Perhaps I did it in a wrong way. So please if you know where I can find it, comment this video and set the link that I will find the schematic of this mainboard as well. So let's talk about the most important topic, the printing quality. I printed a lot of things and I picked these three parts out so that the dock which was delivered on the SD card with a printer. So this is a download, this little elephant from Thingiverse and this Flexi Dragon was downloaded from Thingiverse as well. The printing quality is very good. 
so there are no bubbles inside, no holes. The surface quality is great. There are there's no waviness in the in the in the surface. There are no bumps. The layer adhesion is very good. So in my opinion, the printer is able to create very good prints. I cross-checked it with my CR10. The most people know the CR10 and the CR10 is able to produce very good prints. And I printed this dog on the GTEC and on the CR10 and they are looking exactly the same. So there's no difference in printing quality between these both printers. Here's my summary. I had a lot of issues in the beginning with this printer but after fixing all these issues the printer is very great and for an affordable price. In my opinion GTEC is performing under the capabilities. Keyword missing plugs on the main board. Cable management which is awesome but it's not so friendly for modding. And missing documentation of the open source main road is not so good. Perhaps GTEC will improve these points and if they will do, I am pretty sure they will get this printer to the next level. So for advanced users, this printer is great. It's cheap. And after fixing all these issues, it's running well. For beginners, I'm not sure if beginners will start with this printer with all the issues and with the difficulties in modding. Now it's up to you if you like this printer or if you don't like it. I like it and I think I will have a lot of fun with this in the future. In one of my next videos, I will review the Ender 3, which uses the same concept, or GTEC uses the same concept as the Ender 3. This is the correct order. So I will do a review of the Ender 3, and then after that, we will compare both printers. Hit the thumbs up button if you liked this video. Don't forget to subscribe and comment. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.